So I am recording this video on April 29th, which means in just a couple of days, rent is due. And that was sort of the inspiration behind this video. And I'm not here to say that I promise if you try some of these side hustles, you'll definitely be able to make rent this month, but hopefully it'll help you with a bill this upcoming month or making rent next month, perhaps. And if you are somebody whose job was impacted by the current pandemic, my heart definitely goes out to you but stay motivated. There are tons and tons of opportunities out there. We just need to get a little bit creative. I do hope something in this video will inspire you. I hope this video will help earn you a little bit of side hustle income. And if nothing else, I hope it at least entertains. What's up everyone? My name is Frankie. This is the money resolution where we resolve to get good with money. And this is actually, I think, the third video I put together about earning side hustle income. The first one was ideas for how to side hustle online. So that video definitely still holds up today, especially now in this environment. The more recent video I put together was all about generating passive income. Lots of great ideas jam-packed into that video as well. So if you enjoy the content in this video, I definitely recommend one of those two next. This video took me a long time to put together actually because I started this list and this research back in early February when the world was suddenly changing so quickly. So a lot of the ideas on my list didn't make sense anymore. I went back to research. I ended up finding about 100 ideas and I pared it down to the best 30. So if you appreciate the work and research that went into this video, I would super, super appreciate a like. It's like a virtual high five without touching. No matter who you are, there is certainly something on this list that you can take advantage of and start earning some side hustle income or perhaps temporarily some primary income. Also be sure to stick around until the end. There are about six or seven other ideas I added that didn't quite make the list, but I'll rattle them off there. I did put these side hustle ideas into categories, so I'll put the time card to those different categories down below and on screen now to help you navigate to a section that might be more interesting or relevant for you. I don't wanna waste anybody's time, so let's jump right in. The first category is what I'm just gonna call fun and unique. The first one on this list is going to be usertesting.com. This one came up four or five different times in my research and in my notes, so I decided to lead with this one. It must be a really good one. So there are websites like user testing that let you earn up to $60 a test for looking over websites and giving your feedback. All you gotta do is pass a quick application process and you can get started. And from what I understand, user testing will pay you via PayPal roughly seven days after you complete your test. Tests or tests, plural. If you're listening to a lot of music and you're a music lover, you can actually get paid for listening to music online. In my research, I found tons of websites out there for you to get paid listening to music and giving feedback. Some of the ones that came up the most were Slice the Pie and Music X-Ray. So you can earn two cents to 10 cents to possibly more than that for every 30 seconds or 60 seconds of audio you listen to. Actually, a tip I saw is that with a lot of them, you only need to listen to 60 seconds and then you can leave your review or feedback. So a lot of times it's up and coming artists that they want you to listen to and you can give your feedback and that's probably gonna help them decide which ones to feature on different streaming services. I always wondered how they pick songs for my Discover Weekly each week on Spotify. Maybe this is how. I think you can earn up to about $12 an hour if you do this consistently back to back to back. And you don't have to listen to anything. In a lot of cases, you can tell them preferences for what type of music you enjoy. So rate the song, leave a short review, and you're done. I personally enjoy rounding up my clothes and selling them in person at places like Buffalo Exchange, but I found out in research you can actually do this online. So a couple of sites that I recommend, the first one is ThreadUp, and another one that I recommend is Poshmark. So these sites make it easy to sell your clothes online. And remember, one man's trash is another man's treasure. I think I just called your clothes trash. Sorry about that. So thread up and Poshmark, get on it. Plus you get a declutter, always nice. Next up is teespring.com. And at Teespring, it looks like they make it super, super easy for you to create and sell merchandise. So you can just do this for fun if you're super creative, start your own store, or if you do have some sort of brand, for example, a YouTube channel, you can create your own online store using Teespring. There are some people I really do like and respect like MKBHD that use Teespring as well. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks relatively simple to use, easy to get started with selling your custom merch for your business or just for fun. Looks like you get about 55% of the profit and Teespring gets just 5%, which is really cool. And of course, it goes way beyond t-shirts. It looks like I see tote bags, phone cases, mugs, and a lot more. So teespring.com. Next up, and this one sounds like a lot of fun, this is to become a mystery shopper. So signing up to become a mystery shopper, you can do this on 
on sites like Bestmark. So not only can you make, from what I understand, cash on the side, you can also earn some pretty cool perks, like free dinners or entertainment. Maybe you'll enjoy being a mystery shopper, letting people know about your experience. This next one, I think you're gonna need to get a little bit creative, but this is to help organize events online. So a lot of services and entertainment has been forced to go online right now, and so people need help supporting and promoting these events. So I imagine this is gonna be done mainly through social channels and maybe groups and invites and that sort of thing. So maybe you have a large social friend group and you're somebody that can reach out to some of these companies that are organizing and offer to create the event and spread it around. Perhaps you do this for free the first couple of times, gather some recommendations and eventually start charging for your help for these services. So think things like uh, movies, I've even seen things like therapy sessions, um, workouts, uh, and all the activities, I don't know. So that was section one. Section two is for those of you that have a car, I've got a few really, really great side hustle ideas for you. The first one is to pick up people's orders. And I can't remember where I heard this case study, but there was a woman talking about how she started her own business by picking up people's big Ikea furniture orders. And I know that's a service I could have used three or four different times in my life. Then she took it a step further and offered for an extra charge to build their furniture for them. This is a really, really great thing you can do right now, whether it's groceries or furniture, and you can offer to go pick it up and deliver. Just be safe. Wear a mask and gloves and a hazmat suit. Obviously with that one, if you have a truck or a van, that is preferred. Next up is to just rent out that car. So a lot of us aren't using our car right now and there are sites out there. One that I really recommend is Turo where you can rent your car to people in the neighborhood. So it's an amazing app that it's basically like the Airbnb for cars. Uh, the basic idea, you know, you just get paid for other people renting your car instead of renting from car services like Enterprise or Hertz that can get pretty pricey. And what you can make really does depend on what type of car you have and the market value for that car, but I've seen anywhere from $300 on the low end to $600 on the high end if it's consistently rented out monthly. Now, if you're renting out your car, perhaps you no longer need that parking space that you're paying for. So especially for those of you that live in big cities where parking is really hard to come by or very expensive and you pay for parking in your spot monthly, this is a really great thing to promote. Maybe you can even just do this on Craigslist, for example, rent out your spot, cover the cost of that parking spot monthly, and then some. So there you go. If you have a car, pick up things and deliver or rent your car out or rent out your parking space. Next up is all about social media and business. Speaking of renting things out, you can help small businesses that have equipment rent it out to people if that small business is no longer open. Let me give you an example. Gyms. Gyms are sitting on lots of great equipment that people want to work out at home, but their doors are closed. So maybe you can contact especially the smaller gyms, the privately owned gyms, and see if you can be the intermediary to sort of set up people renting out their equipment. So that's up to you what that could look like, whether it's social media, Craigslist posts, things like that. You just take maybe 10, 20% of the sales that they get from renting and you set it up and organize it. That is a match made in side hustle heaven. Both of you benefit in this situation. Oh, and maybe you can offer to deliver this equipment. Okay, so speaking of small businesses, a lot of small businesses need help or support with their social media pages. So a lot of people are online, they wanna meet the people where they are. So reach out to those small businesses that are pretty inactive with their social pages, or even better, contact small businesses, especially in your neighborhood that don't have a social presence at all and offer to get these started for them. If those businesses also don't have websites, perhaps you can offer, if you have some skills in this area, to put together websites for them. So you can go with something like WordPress or Wix, for example. I built the moneyresolution.com using Wix myself with little to no experience in web development. So if I can do it, I bet you can as well. Shopify is a great one. So if you have experience with Shopify, reach out to those small local businesses and help them get their products that are physical retail online. That is definitely once again, a win-win. To build on helping small businesses with social media, perhaps you can offer to run Facebook ads for these companies. A lot of people know that Facebook is best when it comes to just traffic and visibility for advertising. So this is a great place to go. Just a couple of hours a week to set up these ads, you could probably make anywhere from 500 to $1,500, depending on how successful your ads are. 
and there's lots of videos out there on YouTube that can teach you how to get started if you have no experience in this space. And in doing research for this, I actually heard of people that ended up quitting their job and doing this full time because they were so successful. Not promising that's gonna be you by any means, but again, I think this is a really great opportunity. Next up, consulting. So speaking of special skills or knowledge, I'm sure there is some special skills or knowledge that you could do one-on-one -on -one with people live virtually, perhaps over Zoom, help people with specific skills. Again, it might just be social media or it might be helping a business. For me, for example, I do email marketing by day. And so this is something that I could do to sort of moonlight on the side and help companies with their email marketing. So I can go find small companies. It doesn't have to be local, honestly, if it's online only. I could sign up for their email. And if I don't get a welcome email, I can reach out to them and say, hey, I didn't get a welcome email. Do you need some help developing one? And finally, when it comes to business and helping small businesses, you can offer to become a virtual book Keeper. I've talked about in other videos being a virtual assistant. This is more about, you know, calendars and meetings and that kind of thing. But a virtual bookkeeper, actually someone that can help businesses get their finances together. No accounting degree required. Sort of a fun twist on this that I saw in a different video was to become a cost cutting consultant. If a company is willing to open up their books to you, you can find them savings and you can make a deal with them that you get, let's say 10 to 15% of any savings that you're able to earn for them. Just thought that was a pretty cool idea. Even 5% of savings to them going to you would be a good offer to get started. Next up is teaching online. And you don't need degrees or a ton of experience to get started. First is to teach English online or a second language that you're fluent in. Sites that I discovered that I recommend based on some research is Vipkid, QKids, and Magic Ears. These are all very popular options. So all you need is a bachelor's degree in most cases, solid internet connection, and perhaps a headset or good audio. Oh, and one other thing you might want is a dry erase board for showing and telling. From what I understand, you can make right around $26 or so an hour teaching English. VipKid specifically has over 30,000 teachers, it says as independent contractors. It allows you to work remote as little or often as you'd like as an online teacher, so sort of set your own schedule. Plus, I'm sure you can teach a lot more, maybe something like math or science online if you're more comfortable in those subjects. Okay, speaking of teaching online, maybe it's not a subject from school, maybe it's something else that you're really good at, so crafting or cooking or bartending, making cocktails, for example. I saw recently that Airbnb now has online virtual experiences, so I don't know what it takes to get started with Airbnb, but that looks like a really, really cool side hustle and really, really smart of Airbnb right now to try to pivot. Next is to create and sell online workshops or courses. Tons of sites out there I've talked about on this channel, including Udemy, Teachable, Skillshare, and the list goes on and on. If you're an expert in a field, and you probably are when you really think about it, you just might really need to niche down, you could teach online lessons or create your own course. Courses are generally anywhere from about one hour on the short end up to 10 or 11 hours or so. And I was listening to a podcast today, for example, this woman has several courses all about goats. So again, just think really creatively. I'm sure you have a special skill or knowledge. This next section I'm just calling words. Transcribe interviews. So there are companies like Transcribe Anywhere that will pay you to transcribe audio recordings. Once again, set your own schedule so you can work whenever you want with Transcribe Anywhere. YouTube creators, for example, are always looking for help at transcribing so that it's better for Google to figure out what their video is about rather than guessing just based solely on the title and description. And depending on how fast of a typer you are, you can definitely make a lot of money transcribing interviews or lots of other things, videos, etc. Next up is to narrate audiobooks. This is something I took my hand at doing and I've actually shared how to do that. I put together a video about how to publish no content or low content books on Amazon. So I also recommend that one. And I very briefly touched on how you can use Amazon Creator Studio to become a narrator. So it doesn't have to be your own book. You can sign up to narrate others. You're probably gonna want some equipment though for this one. So something like a microphone, a pop filter, a quiet room, etc., to get started with narrating. Next is to write or create resumes for other people. A lot of people are out there looking for jobs right now and updating their LinkedIn and updating their resumes. So offer to help out if you have skills in this area. One place to go if you don't have any templates ready is actually Google Docs. I mean, look at these, these look nice. So how to find people that need help? Well, I would start with friends and family and your social pages. Again, update your LinkedIn posts that you're offering to help people with their resumes. That's a really, really great place to start. This next one's pretty cool. Uh, you can become a notary. 
So first of all, what is a notary? I found a definition here according to Google. A notary's duty is to screen the signers of important documents such as property deeds, wills, and powers of attorney for their true identity, their willingness to sign without duress or intimidation, and their awareness of the contents of the document or transaction. So basically you just approve words and promises. Notary licenses from what I've seen typically cost around a hundred dollars and what I thought was really cool is in some states you can actually do this totally digitally online. Some states do require some testing etc so be sure to look into what it takes to become a notary in your state. Powering ahead to the last section, this one is all for you creative people out there. First up is to sell digital designs or templates. So a few examples I found here are holiday card templates, printable art or again resumes, perhaps budget sheets, coloring sheets, bingo boards, you name it. And you can offer to do this through sites like Fiverr, perhaps Etsy, or you can even build a personal website yourself and show off some of your skills. So yeah, sell your digital designs online. All right, if you've got a special skill, let's say it's how to sharpen knives most effectively, there are lots of skills that you can offer to do online. The best sites to do this are Fiverr and TaskRabbit. That was a really weird example. Uh, there's other things like video making, photography, writing, so you could be a ghost writer, advertising, graphic design, you name it, the list goes on and on. Whatever skills you have, you can offer them on Fiverr and TaskRabbit. Next is to sell your recipes or meal plan ideas or perhaps workout routines or your craft cocktail recipes, whatever it is, sell these types of things online. I found one site here, uh, Cuisine at Home, that'll pay you for recipes if you're chosen to be published. Submit to Cuisine at Home, make up to $100 if they publish your recipe. You could either try to start a YouTube channel and monetize that or get started by posting on Pinterest. Either way, try to put the stuff that you already know how to do and share it out there for others. Next, sell items on Etsy. So these are gonna be things that are homemade goods. Perhaps you're really good at making candles or honey, knitted things, hats, masks, good idea. Uh, embroidered handkerchiefs, all the things that are on teespring.com. I don't know. If you're crafty, start your own store on Etsy and get selling. Or of course you can do this in person, perhaps going to Goodwill and flipping some things that you thrift via Craigslist. If Goodwills are still open, I should have checked. Second to last idea here is to develop a physical product. And this is one that specifically has caught my eye recently. I followed Pat Flynn as he developed a physical product called the Switch Pod. So it's a thing that holds up your camera and it flips out. Anyway, you'll have to check it out. Really cool to see his process his marketing, his Shopify store, and ultimately his success with this. So this is something I'm thinking about doing. Just to give you an example, I've sort of set a goal for hopefully this year to create a card game, like a physical card game. So it comes down to this. Think of something that you have a problem with in your day to day, see if you can come up with a way to solve that problem. It's really just as simple as that. This one's not simple at all, I'm not gonna lie. And last, again, this one is not simple. This is to start a podcast. Perhaps this starts out more of a hobby. This is more of a long play here, but podcasting is obviously very, very popular and a lot of people more than ever are listening to podcasts. So eventually you can charge per download or you can start your own Patreon. Or of course, a lot of people make money by podcasting by eventually finding sponsors of episodes or sponsors of the show. But I'll tell you this, I have been doing YouTube now for almost a year and a half and I still haven't made a dollar from this. And I imagine podcasting similar. So this one might be more just for fun, but if you got that microphone to narrate, maybe now you can use that same microphone to start your own podcast. The best tip I can give you is to stop overthinking it, just come up with an idea and sort of a template and hit record. This is the part where I tell you all about my new podcast, I'm Launch, I'm just kidding. I'm not starting a podcast. This is my side hustle. I really enjoy this a lot. Okay, I need to end this video. It's getting really long. I have a puppy that needs me and I need to get to editing so I can get this out quick to you guys. And here's a quick list of ideas I just wanted to rattle off here that didn't quite make the list. The first is to offer music lessons over Zoom. So this is very similar to others that I mentioned earlier about teaching English, etc. but it's live music lessons. Another is to sell baked goods. You could also offer to mow neighbors lawns, so you're never too old to mow or to babysit. I saw this sign walking my neighborhood just a couple of blocks away, very, very clever. If you have any sewing skills, you could offer to repair clothes for friends and family members, and I promise you, everybody has stuff that they've been meaning to get repaired. You could offer to deliver for Amazon. I know they're hiring like crazy right now and need a lot of help, so again, if you have a car, this is another thing to consider. And finally, sell things around 
the house. So I mentioned clothing that you could sell, but all of us, I bet you have close to a thousand dollars of stuff laying around the house that we can sell. For me, that would be things like vinyl records, maybe board games. For you, that might be something like sneakers or old gadgets that you have laying around the house. So dig up these items, post them for sale on Craigslist and get to making some side hustle money. Whew. That was a big list. I really, really hope something on this list inspired you. Before I go, I have to ask politely just for a quick like on your way out if you did appreciate this video and get some value out of it. A reminder to subscribe to The Money Resolution if you haven't yet. I put out videos roughly once a week on all things personal finance. Tell me what your favorite idea on this list was down below in the comments. I'd love to hear any personal stories if you did try any of these out. And of course, let me know if you have any ideas that didn't make this list. I'm probably gonna put together more videos like this in the future. Like, sub, comment. That's it guys. Thanks so much for checking out this whole video. I really appreciate you for getting all the way to the end. Once again, my name is Frankie. This is The Money Resolution. I'll talk to you guys soon and best of luck with your side hustles. Plural.